Hi, my name is Martin Keary, and I'm the new head of design at MuseScore. And in this video, I'm going to quickly summarize what we've done with the latest release of MuseScore 3. So I've been collaborating with the community and the internal team to create a large design plan for the future, and this release is the first step. One of our short-term goals is to make MuseScore faster and also more intuitive for first-time users. To start with, we wanted to find gaps where improvements could be made without disrupting the experience of existing users. The first of these improvements is the new Palettes menu, which contains a very large list of elements that can be applied to your score. The sheer number of these elements made palettes slightly difficult to manage in the past. If you opened one up, it forced many of the others out of view. And because there were so many categories, you'd often find yourself searching, searching to locate what you were looking for. And then to solve this, users were eventually given the option of choosing either a basic or an advanced version. But the problem is, for most users, the basic version was missing too many things, while the advanced version contained everything and was just too unwieldy to navigate. There was some ability to edit this list, but it was borderline impossible to discover. And there's also another palette called the Master Palette that contained even more stuff, but appeared in a giant pop-up that blocked your score. This was an obvious first candidate for cleaning up. Can we have all the elements available while also allowing users to specify exactly what they want and don't want? So here's what we've done. When you first open the app, we display a few common palettes which you can immediately rearrange or remove as you see fit. And by clicking on this button, you're shown all the available palettes which you can now add to your main list individually. And by the way, if you remove something from the main list, it appears back here again. And in each individual palette, you can rearrange all the individual elements. And by clicking on this More button, you get access to all the other available elements which you can drag and drop back into your list or straight into your score. So no need for that big clunky window anymore. And if you want to remove something from the list by pressing the Delete key or by pressing this button, it returns back here again so you don't have to worry about accidentally deleting something important. And now here's my favourite part. Say you're just not interested in multiple palettes at all. You're a simple person and all you want is a simple list. Well, just click on Add Palettes and then create a custom palette. Now you can simply drag whatever you want into it and delete everything else. To be honest, this is actually how I like to work and here's a palette that I created for myself, so I no longer have to scroll anymore. We've a lot more we want to do with palettes and you'll see this design gradually improved and refined over time. Apart from that, one of our design goals is to make tiny under the hood improvements that will gradually build up to make the app much more reactive and flexible. With this release, we improved the interface for applying accidentals to the score. These are multiple subtle additions that make the interface more context aware. If I have a note with a flat accidental selected, the interface reflects this. And if I have three notes with sharp accidentals, the interface still reflects this. And I can press the sharp button again to remove them all at once. If I have multiple different accidentals selected, the interface still allows me to make changes to all of them at once. We've also made subtle changes to how notes can be placed on the score too, allowing users to click directly on note durations to apply them without the need to switch on the note input toggle first. This is a standard convention in most other notation apps and will make the experience less painful for new users as well as those migrating from other programs. The first thing I started doing when I began working on MuseScore was to conduct user tests via video chat to get a sense of how well the app handles while also getting to know some of our users. I'll often be sending out new requests for user testing on this channel, which you'll see if you subscribe. Or you can check out my Twitter feed, and the link for that is in the description. Thanks very much, and stay tuned because we're just getting started.